Welcome back to Fire to Fork. This is my new cookbook, which actually was released about 18 months ago. Um, so what I'm doing is just doing a little bit of promo work with um, with some big channels. Um, so oi, oi. Oh, shit. <laughs> get your own channel, mate. Jeez. I'm working on it. I'm yeah. working on it. <laughs> nice book, mate. It looks exactly like mine. Yeah, nice. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's not yeah. Welcome back to Offroad Fixator. <laughs> I'm Todd, this guy's Harry. Um, and today we're going to be going over a bunch of tips and tricks uh, to take your dog out camping out bush, yep. like we like to do. Yeah. So stay tuned. So both of us really like to take our dogs out camping whenever we go working, I suppose we now call it. <laughs> um, take our dogs to work every day, Yep. Um, which is always really nice um, because it's just nice to have a bit of a companion animal around. Uh, they just generally enjoy being out as well. Yeah. And um, it's always nice on a cold night to have a hot dog sort of warming your lap up a little bit. Totally. Um, and yeah, they love it. So it's really good just to, you know, it's probably the, the uh, introduction to having kids, I'd say. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. It's, it's also so much more satisfying to take your dog and exhaust them camping than taking them for a walk after work, which almost feels like a bit of a chore. You're like, oh God, I gotta take the bloody dog for a walk. Like, whereas this, like, they just wear themselves out and exactly. just have the time of their lives. Yeah. It's kind of like kids, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Taking kids outside just wears them out and it's so much better for them and for you. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Um, as long as they don't eat everything off the ground. The dog's not too bad, but kids try to avoid it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, like we, we love to take our dogs camping with us. Um, myself, well, on this camping trip anyway, I've got my dog Cooper, um, who's a Staffy Ridgeback Cross. He's 15-ish, um, so a bit of an old fella. He's and, um, Yeah. <laughs> Uh, he still eats like a like a two year old dog, but um, yeah, he loves getting out and just having a sniff around. Yeah. Um, and what about Mr. Fred? Fred is, I think he's a border collie bull Arab cross, something like that. We don't really know. He's a rescue dog. He's five, um, and he's very high energy, very boisterous, um, and loves camping. He's a good, he's a great camp dog. But there are certain things we're going to watch out for, so we should probably get into them now. Yeah, yeah. Um, so probably some good <coughs> considerations for if you're going to take your dogs camping. Um, obviously, to take your dogs camping, you just bring them with you. Yeah. Um, there's a number of things, obviously, when you're taking your dogs camping with you, you can just throw them in the back and just hope they survive. But uh, there's a number of things that over the years and over a number of trips and a number of times taking our dogs out that we've learnt, you know, oh, we should bring that as well. Um, and they're probably a really handy tip for you guys to know as well. So your basics, you know, like having a, when you bring your dog, they got to eat, they got to drink. Um, usually they're pretty good. I mean, dogs are, are dogs, so they're pretty good stomachs. Water sources, I would, pref I always prefer them to have a fresh water source. Um, where we are at the moment, we are, we've got a lovely flowing river right next to us. It's very clear, um, but the bank is very, very steep down to it. So to drink, they got to submerge themselves in the water. Yeah. So I'll either just like cart up some water or they'll have some water from us. Yeah. Um, if we're around with a whole bunch of like muddy puddles, I prefer them not to drink from that because Definitely. it ends up, the dirt gets all clogs them up. Um, so yeah, giving them like a source of fresh water um, yeah. is always handy. And that's, and that's a, a consideration when you're packing. I find that my dog drinks as much water as I do. So if I've got, <clears throat> if I'm going away and I'm like, cool, I got 20 liters. I always make sure that I pack an extra, uh, the amount that I would drink yep. in that period. Um, so that might be three, four liters a day. Um, I make sure I pack that extra. Yep. So, uh, yeah, just a consideration for your water capacity. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, cause you do need fresh water all the time. And if it's a, if it's a hot environment, double it. Exactly, exactly. Um, and even if they've just got the water there, they can choose to drink it or not. Um, if, you, if there's no water, they, they can't drink. Yeah. But if they've got water there, they'll drink as much as they need to. Another, and another consideration is there is a lot of water waste with a dog because they knock the bowls over. You know, you stop on the side of the road and you're like, hey mate, have a drink. And you fill up the water bowl and they don't have any. You're like, oh, for God's sake. And then you pour out half a litre of water or whatever, yep. or a litre of water. Um, and yes, so it's annoying. So just, just bear, bear, that, bear that in mind. Pack lots of water for your dog. Yep. And the other thing is obviously uh, food as well. They've got to eat and either they'll eat your food or they'll, they'll eat their own food. <laughs> and we prefer them to eat their own food because we like eating nice food. Yeah. Um, so 
most dogs, and, and look, our dogs aren't very fussy, which is a godsend. Yeah. A lot of dogs are, um, and I would recommend, this is more the advice for those people, is try to sort of mimic your dog's in, uh, diet when you come out camping. Make it exactly the same. Yeah, so bring the same. Whenever you feed you, them at home, same food. bowl, same everything. Yeah, same dry food, if you've got wet food, whatever it may be. Make it the same. Um, yeah. Same with like the dinner routines. So like with ours, you know, obviously, you know, sit, wait, put your food down. Yep, you can go. Yep. Keep that consistency because um, the dogs really feel that and they're able to be more comfortable when they've got a, a sense of, um, yeah, like they're, they're comfortable. Without know? a doubt. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, yeah, I completely agree. The other thing that I find really important to make my dog comfortable is making sure that he feels really safe and secure in the car. Some, if some people with smaller dogs particularly um, will do like a little box and we'll have a blanket in there and that stuff like that and they sit and they feel secure in that little box yep. so that you know if, if it's bumpy if it's rocky if it's slowly sliding on the brakes they're not just being thrown off don't just have them sitting on the front seat if they're not comfortable with it if, if you're a tradie and you, your dog's with you every day sure keep it consistent but most dogs don't spend that much time in the car yeah um, so my dog's big he's 42 kilos and he's lanky so he he sleeps he has in the, the back seat or the boot and both have like a nice dog bed he feels secure mm. if i slam on the brakes he bumps into the seat bumps in the back seat but like for example if i put my dog in the front seat it's a nightmare he headbutts the windscreen, he falls over, he bangs his head on the dash, yep. he hates it. It doesn't feel secure at all. So make sure that you've, you've got that dialed in. Um, if you haven't, get yourself a sling dog cover for the back seat. Oh, for sure. It is amazing. Um, yep. From previously just having a normal seat cover to having something that actually like is a, is a full, you know, sort of little half pipe for the dogs to, to sit in. Yep. And it means that when you have to hit the brakes or you start going down a steep hill, they don't just fall into the footwell. Yeah. Um, it also means that you also have are able to use the footwell to store things for your camping. Yeah. So you can keep things under there and it's not going to get covered in dirty dog paws and hair and all the rest of it. Yeah. Um, which is super handy. Um, and the other thing is allowing fresh air. Mm. This is more for hot weather, I would say, um, but obviously uh, applicable everywhere, is, you know, crack a window or whatever the dog is capable with or yep. is, is uh, comfortable with, I should say. Yeah, as long as um, they can be kept cool. If you've got rear aircon turned on, I, yep. I, I, that's what I do for my dog. I've got three zones, so I just turn the rear aircon on a bit colder than I yep. have it, and he's very comfortable back there. Yeah. Uh, if, you do, if your dog does, uh, like mine, if, if he uh, is big, I fill, I fill up my footwear with gear, and then I put the dog bed on top, um, and then he puts his head on the center console. Now, if you've got a center console, dog claws and teeth and stuff <laughs> yep. ruin your center console. So uh -huh. make sure you have a cover over there or put a towel over there or something like that. Cause I know because my wife's center console is screwed yep. from Fred <laughs> um, uh, and mine is still mint. So make sure you cover that. Um, and the other thing is with dog beds, a trick that I found years ago, again, if you've got a bigger dog, this works better, um, is using a cot sheet. They're about three bucks a pop cot sheet over the dog bed your dog bed stays clean you can just wash the cot sheet and replace it you don't get a stinky dog bed yep so very, that's very been really true. good yeah yeah now sleeping arrangements yes this is really important where's your dog going to sleep at night um yep. now you will get uh people on either end of the spectrum some will say no they're going to sleep cuddled up with me wherever i'm sleeping yeah and others they'll say oh he's a dog he'll sleep outside he's fine yeah um look you Mim you do mim you mimic your home yep um, try to bring, as Harry said, bring a bed that they're comfortable with, either if they're familiar with the sheet or the bed, whatever it may be. Um, but do have a consideration of where you're camping as well. Obviously, if you're staying in a big four caravan park on an Easter weekend, you wouldn't leave your dog just outside, no. just wandering around at nighttime while you're asleep. Um, likewise, if you're in an area where, say, there's lots of baits or you're expecting you know, traffic around or... Or if, um, or if they chase kangaroos yeah, and there are and feral um, cats, whatever it may be, yeah. anything that they're skittish, then either keep them tethered or keep them sort of in a location where they can't run away. Yeah. So personally, I, like any of my dogs, they sleep inside the car at night time. Um, I've got the... What are they called? Snapshades. Snapshades, that's Same. the one. Snapshades. I've got the snapshades in the back of my car so I can crack the window down. It's not a, an opening so they can stick the whole head out, but it still allows that airflow through. Snapshades are really good with dogs by the way and the reason i say that is because when i was up in the kimberley there are bugs everywhere yeah. <laughs> and dogs get bitten by mozzies and sand flies and stuff just like us yeah. so being able to have snap shades means you can have the windows down that's where fred sleeps in a hot environment in a cold environment he sleeps in my swag um, at the foot of the swag which is fred does not sleep in a bed usually but in winter he's happy in the, in the foot of the swag yeah. um, <clears throat> Uh, but in summer, it's too bloody hot. So he sleeps in the car, crack the window, snapshades are mint. 
because they keep the bugs out and they keep the bugs out of your car as well mm, yeah which is crucial or if you've got a um if you've got a sunroof you can also crack that a little bit as well to let a bit a little bit of airflow because yeah it's surprising especially when their dogs are staying in there all night and it's all closed up how yucky it must get like i, I wouldn't sleep in there i wouldn't sleep in there no, no. i wouldn't want my di my dog to sleep somewhere i wouldn't sleep yeah um yeah. Yeah. So, and, and if you're lucky like me, and you've got a camper trailer. Chuck him in. I just chuck him in the floor of the camper trailer, and yep. that works really well. He's very mm. safe and secure in there. He's got plenty of airflow. Um, I'm around, and all that happens is, <clears throat> if I want to have a sleep in, like I did this morning, he wakes me up at 6:30 or whatever, and um, and I let him out because he's he's a, he's a good dog. He can he can just run around. Yep. He won't run away. Um, yeah. I just let him out, and he plays by himself for a couple of hours, and I have a nice sleep in. Scene transition. Now got a bit more of a comfy, comfy spot, and you can see the dogs that we're talking about now. Um, we want to talk a little bit about some of the dangers that you may face when taking your dogs. This isn't to deter you from taking your dogs out camping with you, more to make you aware of certain things. Um, certain things that we're aware of and keep in mind when we go camping in different places. So the number one thing, now this is, we're obviously based in WA. The number one thing that concerns me when taking my dogs camping is 1080. So 1080 baits are a poison uh, which is used for um, controlling um, different species um, in the wild um, and yeah, can obviously be very devastating for dogs. Um, what do they actually look like anyway? They're actually, they're little like dried sausages. They're kind of like, um, yeah, like little salami sticks basically. So they don't go, don't really go off um, and they are air dropped. Um, which is an issue. So technically anywhere in WA can have 1080 bait because birds pick them up and drop them places. Uh, but you know, you can't be scared of that. You can, te you can technically be <laughs> 1080 baited in your backyard yeah. uh, if a bird drops it in there, but it's very unlikely. So if you see signs, obviously be careful. Uh, there are some exceptions. So this area here we're in uh, is baited, uh, but they don't bait close to water sources. So we're on a river and therefore we feel quite secure. I'm not saying that, or we're not saying that, you know, go to baited areas. And if you camp by a river, you're gonna be 100% safe. I'm just saying, I've been doing it for 20 years. Yep. By a river, and it's y been fine. Exactly, yeah. Um, we, my family had a dog who unfortunately did pass away from a 1080 bait. Was probably one of the more horrific ways that a dog can go. Yeah. Cause it ends up just like, all it does is it basically burns a hole in the side of their stomach and the, from the pain and all the rest of it, they, there's a number of things I won't go into it, but you don't want to see it and experience it. So do keep your dogs away from it. Obviously, if you see random little sausages on the ground, you don't eat them and don't let your dogs eat them either. Yep. Um, don't think, oh, that'll go really well with my, um, my camembert. No, don't do it. Yep. Um, and just keep an eye on your dogs as well, because obviously dogs will go around, they'll sift them out and go, oh, that tastes yummy, and without a second thought. Um, yep. Where we are at the moment, as Harry said, is, is a, a low risk area. It's not guaranteed but it's fairly low risk because we're right next to a waterway but as mentioned birds do pick them up and move them around um, so just do keep an eye out on um, on your dogs yeah and if, if you need to like for example if I'm going through the Pilbara and it's a heavily baited area of cattle stations are renowned mm. for it cattle and sheep state sheep stations are heavily baited yep. really heavily baited because the wild dogs are a real issue out there if you have to stop on a sheep station for lunch or whatever and and your, your dog needs to have a run around and a wee and whatever put a muzzle on them Put a muzzle on them it's safer for them it's the kind of thing to do yep so or if there's more than one of you at camp like it's you and the missus or the family or something like that you leave someone in charge so you keep an eye on that dog don't let them out of your sight always watching them see where they go because i mean worst case scenario if they do manage to find one hopefully you're able to respond to it get them to come back or be able to um you know get rid of it so your dog can't jump into it yeah. as well now if your dog does eat a bait so you see them get that sausage and it goes down the gob, salt. You get a handful of salt and you jam it down their throat. Dogs don't have a gag reflex. You can open their mouth, jam salt down their throat. You want probably four tablespoons down there yep. and they'll throw up immediately. So that is the quickest way to get 1080 back out. There you go, okay, <clears> cool. I've done it before. Yep. He, ate, he ate a big bit of rat poison. Yeah. Salt straight down the gob, 30 seconds, throw up. Yeah, wow. They empty their stomach completely. They hate it, don't get me wrong, but it's a lot better than them dying. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, that's uh, definitely better than the alternative. Yeah. Um, your other issues that you're gonna face out while out camping are obviously like environmental things. Um, we're talking 
where the dog's going to walk, what they're going to be around on. Like right now where we are, there's a river right here. There's quite a steep bank and where the water goes into it, it's not easy for them to get back out again. Yeah. Um, Fred being a, a big, lively, energetic dog who's quite lanky, probably wouldn't have an issue. He's fine. But and Fred can swim for hours. As yeah. Well. And this old fella here, he's got a bit shorter legs. He hasn't got quite as much energy. He would struggle trying to get back out of this river. Definitely. So anytime he's near the bank, I'm really, really careful with him. Yeah. Um, we've got a fire because I'm out camping with him and he just, he, you know, induction to fork just doesn't have the same ring no. to it. So keeping your dogs away. I mean, dogs are very good at sensing heat anyway. They're amazing. So dogs with their nose can sense heat really well. So you, they, I mean, I've never had Fred burn himself. Yep. He's, he, when he was a puppy, he suddenly ended up with no whiskers. <laughs> um, but that's, they only do that once. Um, they, yeah. I've never actually had any of my dogs burn themselves. So they're, they're pretty good, but yep. certainly just be be cautious of it yeah yeah and even like you know having hot coals and then walking around obviously they'll smell a big fire but if they got a hot coal and they stand on it um you'll hear about it yeah, yeah. <laughs> or if if they're like laying around the fire and you know embers shoot out um we have had one instance where an ember came and landed on him and left a big burn mark in his fur didn't burn his skin thankfully but um was quite a quite a shock to the yeah. system and then, so, and then the other thing is, is just hot ground in general. So uh, particularly up in the Pilbara and Kimberley and stuff, you get those hot red rocks. Um, gee, I mean, like I, I, I go barefoot 99% of the time. So I always get out of the car and test the ground before. If I can walk on it, he can walk on it. Yep. And I know that's probably not the best test because I've got like asbestos feet, um, but so does he. So um, mm. yeah, so just, make, just be careful of that. Um, uh, but yeah, that, those are kind of your main, your main dangers, I think. Yeah. On the other end of the spectrum, when it's quite cold, um, having a dog, I mean, Fred himself is a, is a furnace. He doesn't seem to feel the cold at all. Not at all. You have smaller dogs or dogs who don't carry around quite as much energy or fat. Um, when it's quite a cold cold night and you know, you're all sitting around, having been drinking, having a great time, and they're just sitting there still, cold, wet, whatever it may be, they're gonna get very cold and they're gonna stay cold. So yeah. find a way to keep them warm, keep them dry. Um, which will go a long way to making sure that they want to come back out camping with you as well. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And then the other thing is is wildlife. So um, Fred chases kangaroos. It's yep. a problem. So if I'm in a roo, uh, I try not to camp in places where there are roos because of that reason. Um, and uh, yeah, I just I've tried everything, but the reality is he'll chase them. So yeah, I just try not to camp where they are. They are. But they're also like a couple of places I camp, there are a lot of nat native bandicoots that come out. Mm. And they will, they will come and sit right here under the chair. So you just, I can usually hear them before Fred does. So uh, I just make sure that he is well behaved and not allowed to get off the chair or get off where, whatever he's on if there is a bandicoot around. And that's just a training thing. And if you need to put a lead on them, put a lead on them. Yep. Um, but yeah, because you, you can't, you know, that, that's their home. Yeah. Yeah, and the, the dog just natural instinct to chase and hunt down and, you know, very uh, inquisitive. Yeah. Um, I mean, the extension of that is also your reptiles. You know, you've got your snakes and your lizards and, and um, you yep. know, spiders as well. Things that crawl around that they'll go, oh, what's that? That's interesting. I'll poke my nose in it. Yeah. And um, snakes tend to be a little bit quicker than dogs in terms of biting them. Yeah. <laughs> so. um, and you can do snake aversion training, which Fred's done. Yeah. Um, so you can do a course um, and they... Yeah, they teach them about snakes. So if, if Fred sees a snake, he shits himself and runs away. Yep. Which is great. And he can smell it. He, he can smell a snake and he'll run away. Although I will say it's very funny for the first couple of days after they first do it because he shut himself and ran away when he saw a, a wiggly stick. Like just kind of like a, like a bit of a snake shaped stick. He was like, whoa. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's really funny. Yeah, gee. So, <clears throat> but yeah, he, he can smell a snake and knows it's bad. Yep. Um, if you don't have one, consider keeping a first aid kit with you either if it's just a normal first aid kit or a pet first aid kit the pet first aid kits are great because they have special bandages that stay on your dog yes very very handy um yep. survival um do a first aid kit yeah both is, of us carry one of them exactly and it is really really handy yes like there's a number of things which cross over to normal first aid kits yeah but being able to have something in a pouch you can throw over your shoulder it's got a water bowl in it it's got a, um, a lead if you need it as well we actually had a, a situation where we needed that where I was out walking my two dogs, had two leads, all that sort of stuff. We came across a dog with no lead, no collar, who walked up to our dogs. I was able to take mine, tie them to a tree, and then use this other one to restrain the other dog and hold him somewhere until I could find where his owner had gone, um, which was a super handy thing to do because when you've got three dogs and they're all a little bit antsy yeah. <laughs> and trying, you know, you've only got two arms and, and you don't want to obviously lose a finger. So um, having little things like that is super handy. The bandages Harry's talking about are called conforming bandages. 
Um, usually they're like a red color and basically once you, they sort of stick to themselves and they, they are designed to go over a normal soft bandage. So super handy, like if you've got a dog, so usually they'll get a cut on their paw or something like that. Yeah. Break a nail, whatever it may be. Very hard to get dogs to sit still. So being able to wrap and they, up something. Look, they will chew it off, but at least it'll keep on, keep it on there for a couple of hours. Yeah, yeah. And, and usually like in that kit, you get two of them and that's enough for you to wrap it up for now and then make whatever trip you need to do to get into town and 100%. find a vet and, and go forward from yep. there. So if you don't carry one, definitely get one. Link in the description with a affiliate code if you want to buy it. Nice. You make that cheddar. <laughs> <laughs> Got to afford them dog biscuits, mate. It's pedigree or nothing for mine. Yep. Got all yours. Last, last big safety consideration I would consider is other people. Um, <laughs> humans are particularly dangerous. Um, we know that because we are humans. But also humans who do not like dogs, who don't want dogs in their area because maybe they're farmers, they've got livestock around. They don't want a dog there. They, in a lot of rural areas, um, they are not, there's wild dogs around. And if they see a dog shape going towards their sheep, they'll grab that rifle and, oh, yeah. um, and, and your dog won't. And won't they've got every with. right to do so. Yeah. If, it, if, if your dog is threatening their livestock, uh, like if Fred, if I found Fred chasing sheep and a farmer shot him, I wouldn't be mad at that farmer. Mm. I'd be devastated that I lost my dog, but yep. I wouldn't be mad at that farmer because that's that's their livelihood. Yeah, they've got to protect it. And so they you, don't know if Fred is a, a domesticated dog or a wild dog. He, they, they might be the, the first of six dogs to come out of the bush. Exactly. So they do that. Um, but that also extends to being camping and having, having other campers around. We, as campers, try to keep away from other people as much as possible. Definitely. Other campers do the opposite and they come and camp right next to you for whatever reason yep. and then start up their Jenny and then sit in their camper trailers and you like know, assholes. watch um, days of our lives yep. um, and get very annoyed when suddenly your dog is at their door. So always assume, and this is a very safe rule, assume other people don't want to see your dog. If they want to see your dog, they'll probably come and tell you. Um, yeah, yeah, Don't yeah. just go, oh, no, he's <clears> fine. Yeah, he's good. He's fine. And just let them run up and run all over him. Don't yeah. do it. Yeah. Keep your dog away from other people because, tell you what, if I was out bush and someone else's dog ran up and ran into my set while I'm trying to film or, or do whatever it is, um, it's obviously a huge inconvenience. But also, like, you don't know that dog. And you, and you don't know if they've got a dog that's, that's dog aggressive and things yeah. like that. So you just keep your dog out of other people's camps for sure. Yep. Yeah. Especially if you've got your own dogs and then dog on dog interactions is just, just is too much to worry about in that split second the dog runs out of the bush. So yep. keep your dog in your campsite within your control. Don't let them just run off in anyone else's. Yeah. Now, there are also some myths about traveling with dogs um, that I think it's good to dispel. One is national parks. Now, you're not allowed a dog in a national park. That's for sure. That's, there's no doubt about that. Yep. But there's nothing wrong with passing through. And there are exceptions to this. Some, place, some places won't even let you pass through with a dog in your car. They will not let you go in there with a dog in your car. A lot of other places will. So you can drive through national parks with your dog in your car and you're all good. Yep. But just make sure you check that. But I'd say 90% of the time, you can't have your dog in your car to go through it and get somewhere else. So yep. don't, don't stress too much. Like if you need to drive through, through that section, the range is not going to pull you over and, and crap on you if you've got your dog. So, you know, you can, you can be a bit more relaxed with that. Yeah. Also, more than likely, if you're halfway through a national park and you find a ranger, they're not going to say, oh, well, you have to dispose of your dog before you can drive any further. They're exactly. Going to say, yeah. get, get out, you know, keep going, out you go. They'll give you a warning um, or they'll, something. They'll tell you to move on, essentially. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, look, there are a whole bunch of reasons why it's great to travel with a dog. There are a whole bunch of reasons where it's a bit of a pain in the ass. It's like traveling with kids. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> You know, the fact that you can't go to national parks, the fact that you can't leave him in a hot, in a hot car and all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, just make sure that you've, you've got a good system. Like for me, for example, if, I'm, if I need to leave for a long period of time with Fred and, and leave Fred at the car, yep. he's got a big bowl of water, the awning's up, yep. he's in the shade, he'll sleep under the car, on his mat, tied up, and he's all good. Yep. Um, it's also great security. No one, no one's going to come and rob a car with a 42 kilo dog tied to it. <laughs> That's very true. Because again, you don't know what that dog's going to be like. And um, you know, yeah. if you see a car with a dog tied to it and a car that doesn't have it, so as a burglar, I'm going over there. Yeah. <laughs> not worried about trying to fuss with the dog. 100%. 100%. Yep. Yeah. So like, I'll leave Fred outside of the shops or whatever with the windows down, the snap shades. Yep. Because no one's sticking their head in there. Mm. Although he has poked the snap shades out a few times. Yep. Which is quite funny. <laughs> just come back and find snap shades on the ground and this dog like, hi guys. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't see you, now I can. <laughs> 
So when you are taking your dogs out camping, um, there's a few things that you can probably do to make their experience even better as well. Number one thing I do with my dogs is I go for a walk with them. Um, you, you get to camp and everyone sits around and does nothing, but sometimes your dogs want to go off and explore. Yeah. And you say, no, don't go anywhere, stay here. But you go and explore with your dog. Where we are at the moment, there's tracks going everywhere. So I'll grab my dog, let's go for a walk, you know, let's go down and have a look down here. They love getting to look around, getting to see different things. I get to, you know, watch them enjoy it. And I get to go for a walk as well. Same with first thing in the morning. When I get up in the morning, I get out of my tent, get the dog out off the back seat. We go for a walk because they've been cooped up sitting there for however long. Yeah. Um, obviously, Cooper's a little bit older, so you know, old people got to go to the toilet a fair bit. Um, so we go for a walk. We just go for a walk down there. Um, gets his blood moving, able to get him warm as well. Um, and that way, when we get back, um, you know, usually I'll put the kettle on and then go for a walk. That way, by the time I get back, I've got a nice hot kettle waiting for me, which nice. is always nice. Yeah. No, that's that's really good. And I, I always bring a few balls because Fred likes to chase a ball, likes to chew a ball, um, and try and bring floating ones, unlike me yesterday. So that unfortunately there's a ball in the river that is yeah. at the bottom of the river because Fred didn't know it didn't float. So. <laughs> and it's a bit cold, we're not going swimming down there to find I it. I don't know where it is, it's somewhere <laughs> in the river. So yeah. I don't like that, this is littering and it's not good and yeah, but it happens. So yeah, try and bring floating balls. Well, yeah, look, get out there, enjoy your dogs camping. Um, it's so much more fun. They far prefer to come with you than stay at a kennel or stay at home. Yep. Um, and um, it's also a good practice. The more you do it, the better at it you get and, and the more comfortable you'll become. I yep. mean, I've been camping with Fred for the last five years and four and a half years and he's loved every second of it. Yep, and it's just like kids. <laughs> yeah. Every time you go to get that 5% better that you, uh, that you learn how to do it and learn what, what works and what doesn't. Yeah. Um, and just keep doing it because they enjoy it, you enjoy it. And um, tell you what, the next time you go camping and they start looking up at the car as you're packing it up, oh. and you'll go, oh, okay, I guess you can come. <laughs> Fred will not let me leave. If, if, if he sees a swag or like, if he sees any kind of camping gear going in the car, he just stands by it like, let me in. <laughs> <laughs> if I hitch up the camper trailer, he is there. Yep. <laughs> he's glued to the car. As soon as that door opens, he's just in. Yep. Like, and will not get out of the car. Mm. Yeah, oh, there, He's there. like, nah, bugger that. You <laughs> left me behind once and I'm not having that again. Yeah, yeah. Bring them with you. Definitely worth it. Yeah. So look, guys, thank you very much for watching. If you've got any, um, any good tips as well, make sure to leave them down in the comments for us to learn and for any other viewers to learn as well because we're really interested in obviously learning more and making our experience with our dogs even better and maybe you have some great tips that can um, help us improve our experience as well. Absolutely. So, Let us know. Yeah, definitely. So thanks for watching, guys. We'll catch you in the next episode. Cheers. See ya.